My neighborhood had one of those corn mazes every fall. Honestly, I don't quite understand them myself. It was supposed to be a Halloween attraction, but I couldn't really ever figure out what they had to do with Halloween. It's not like it was a haunted corn maze or something. I've seen those before, but this one was not like that. It was simply a regular corn maze that you were supposed to find your way through. The maze did change every year, so it was a new challenge to go through. Although I didn't understand the point of these things, that didn't mean I begrudged others who did enjoy them, and it didn't mean I didn't enjoy them either. In fact, I loved those corn mazes. This was in spite of what happened to me the very first time I went through one, though. I was eight years old at the time this happened. My parents didn't work a traditional workday schedule. This made things pretty easy on us when it came to going places. What I mean is that there were much more times they weren't busy that we were able to go on trips because of this. For example, if you wanted to see a movie at noon on a weekday, you could enjoy a nearly empty theater. The corn maze opened on a Wednesday. I thought this was odd somewhat. My mom took us to it that afternoon, and it was completely empty as we expected. The attendant told my mom that if we really wanted to, we could go through the maze one by one. This would make it more challenging and atmospheric. I begged my mom to let me go through it first, and I did so. Even though it was in the middle of the day, I was still quite scared. It was very creepy sneaking through the maze like that all by myself. There were many dead ends, and I hit most of them. My eight-year-old mind could get very paranoid about hitting so many dead ends. Even though I didn't give it much mind, over time my brain did start worrying about me not being able to find my way out of the maze. That's when I heard a voice. I wasn't sure exactly where it was coming from, nor what it actually said at first. It was clearly a human voice though. I began wondering if I had taken so long in the maze that they had sent someone in to find me. Maybe it was my brother and he'd come looking for me or something. I tried to follow the voice when I heard it again. I actually followed it right into another dead end. I was about to turn around and try to find a different pathway when I finally heard the voice clearly. They were singing some song about corn. I was a little freaked out for some reason. It just seemed like a weird thing for someone to just be singing randomly in the maze. It was also scary because I couldn't tell where the voice was coming from. I wondered if it was from the other side of the corn wall or something. I asked if anyone was there. There was a long pause, and then I heard them singing again. I asked where the person talking was talking from. The only answer I received was more singing. While staring at that corn wall in front of me though, I watched an arm come out of it. Seeing the arm emerging, I suddenly felt my eyes focus. I was now able to see there was a person crouched down in the corn hiding. He beckoned at me. Come on. I didn't know who this was, so I turned and started running. I didn't know if he was chasing after me. All I could hear were my own footsteps and my heart beating in my ears. I finally ran into my brother. He was wondering why I was so freaked out. I explained what just happened. He took me back toward the entrance of the maze, and we told the attendant that someone was hiding out there in the corn. He had also been trying to get me to walk into it with him. He went into the corn maze and checked himself, and claimed he didn't find anyone there. Still though, he was nice enough to give my parents their money back, and also insisted we were the very first customers that had shown up that day so we had no idea how anyone had gotten in or out of the maze without him seeing them. To this day, I can still see that person in my mind, crouching in the corn and beckoning me to come towards them. I used to work in one of those haunted corn mazes. Well, technically I didn't work in one of them. The people who worked in the corn mazes were the people dressed up as monsters and ghosts. I was just the ticket taker. In addition to taking the tickets, I was also the person who cleaned up after the maze was closed down. We stayed open until midnight, so by the time we got all the people out of the maze and cleaned up after them, and closed up shop, 
It was usually around 1 a.m. in the morning. On this particular night the story took place, it was a night just before Halloween. We were very busy because of this. The other ticket taker had also called in sick, making me the only person who was there to do the job. I can't say I was too happy about that exactly. Although, the time did go by really quickly. I barely had a chance to breathe. Before I knew it, the day was over though. The people and all the actors had cleared out. I waved to all my colleagues as they went home, and before I knew it, the once completely packed area was now empty, all except for me walking over to the maze. I realized the actors hadn't really cleaned up the maze at all. I noticed there were several food wrappers on the ground. I didn't want to leave the work for the next day, so I grabbed up a broom and one of those standing dustpans and went to clean up a bit. I have to admit to feeling a bit of a buzz as I walked through the maze. Although I had been in it by myself before, this was the first time I had done it in the middle of the night. It was eerily quiet, save for the sounds of bugs and stuff. I had a map of the maze with me, so I wouldn't get lost. I had to use the flashlight on my cell phone in order to be able to see at all. I'm not sure how long I'd been in the maze before I began to feel like I was being watched. Hell, it was a haunted corn maze. I was able to brush it off because being scared was exactly how I was supposed to feel in this scenario. The feeling didn't really go away though. It wasn't too long before I began to hear these little noises. At first, it was just simple things, like corn stalks rustling. That could have been chalked up to the wind. I also began to think I was hearing footsteps though. Very cliche. They would stop whenever I stopped walking. I chalked that one up to my imagination or an echo of something. What I couldn't brush off was the sound of a can crushing as someone accidentally stepped on it. I immediately called out to check if anyone was there and got no answer back. A few minutes later, I heard a similar noise of trash being crushed underfoot. I called out again. There was nothing but general anxiety now. It was beginning to develop into paranoia. I was sure there was someone in the maze with me. I immediately thought it must be one of the actors. It was technically Halloween now. Maybe he'd remained in the maze and didn't clean it up on purpose, drawing me into it in an attempt to scare me and prank me. I called out and told whoever it was that I would not be getting scared. I was lying just a little bit though. I was already very scared. The more intermittent noises I continued to hear, the more I called out with no answer. I began to get even more paranoid about what was going on. The joke had gone on far enough. Finally, I'd had more than enough of this. I wasn't completely finished cleaning the maze, but I decided the rest of it would have to wait till tomorrow. If it did happen to be one of the actors following me around in the maze, then I'd make them clean up in the morning. How's that for a prank? I made my way back to the entrance of the maze. I stopped hearing those noises as I went along to the exit. I went out, went and closed the ticket booth. When I was about done, I tried to quickly look back at the maze. I jumped in surprise when I saw a figure standing in the entranceway. I didn't know who it was, and by looking at the size of this person, there was no way it was any of the actors I knew. This man was much taller than any of the ones we had working. I realized he had been following me around the maze the whole time. He didn't make any moves toward me, but I didn't give him much of a chance to anyway. I had the lockbox with the ticket money in it. I figured that must have been what he was after. A weird thought struck me though. If he was after the money, why had he been following me around in the maze? When I'd like an idiot left the box laying right on the ticket booth in the open. The only explanation was that he was after me. I grabbed the box and sprinted over to my car. I looked back once over my shoulder, only to see the man was now right next to the ticket booth. Unfortunately, this wasn't exactly a horror movie. The car started immediately. I pulled out and left. The following morning, I arrived to the corn maze, and I asked if anyone had been there past closing, or if they knew anyone who had. No one did. The man who was following me around that corn maze was clearly not supposed to be there.
I'm not exactly sure if this story is YouTube friendly at the moment, but it is the scariest night of my life. I kid you not, this story is 100% true. I know it sounds like a horror movie, but this very well could have been something that actually was in a scary movie. Only, it could happen to anyone. My boyfriend and I are into making love secretly in public places. We have a list of places where we do it. We call it our bucket list. Anyway, one location was a cornfield. Around Halloween time, we were sitting on the couch bored, taking shots of vodka and not exactly looking forward to having kids ringing on the doorbell all night long. Halloween night was obviously a good night to get out, so we decided to visit a corn maze. We dressed in warm clothes and got on our way. We both knew how the night would end, making love in a cornfield. One more to cross off the list. We go through the maze with the different jump scares, we scream and giggle. We were having a blast together. After a while, we didn't get any more jump scares. It was very dark and for some stupid reason, we hadn't brought our phones with us. Looking back, I think we didn't bring them so we could immerse ourselves in the Halloween spirit more. Because of this though, we had no clue what time it was and it turns out the maze was now closed. He and I were admittedly very tipsy. We ended up going off the stupid path, out into the corn stalks. We found this wooden fence. A wooden fence which happened to be the perfect spot for my boyfriend of three years to bend me over. We began caressing each other's faces, putting our lips together. He pushes my skirt up and begins pulling my tights down. When I hear a snap, I have severe anxiety, and I know that doesn't fit with someone who's down to do this sort of thing in public, but it's just part of who I am. I moved my hand and placed it on my boyfriend's chest, signaling for him to stop. I turned my head in the direction of where I'd heard that single snap. Hey, did you hear that? I whispered to my boyfriend. He replied, no, I'm just focused on you. You know, usual boyfriend response. We were about to start up again, but I was feeling really nervous. Something didn't feel right here. I heard another snapping sound. I turned around immediately. Okay, you can't tell me you didn't just hear that, I whispered to my boyfriend. He looked curious and concerned. I heard it that time too. We stayed quiet, but we didn't hear anything else for five more minutes. We deduced it had to be a raccoon or something, and we're starting to get back to business. Now, though, I started to hear some heavy breathing. Did I wear you out already? I jokingly expressed. Not at all, my boyfriend replied. And that's when I realized he wasn't even out of breath. We must have been too into our activities that we didn't notice what was standing in front of us. As I looked up, I could see there was a man. He was at least six foot tall, dressed in a scream costume, but instead of a knife, he held a machete. Scream was the first horror movie I ever saw, and always remained my number one favorite movie, but not after this. I'm 5 foot 3 and my boyfriend is 5 foot 6, so this guy was completely towering over us. I screamed out my boyfriend's name. He stopped and looked up, and yelled to follow him. I'm directionally challenged, so if I ran by myself I would get lost for days. On the other hand, my boyfriend somehow knows where he's going at all times, so I followed him closely. His Adidas and my snow boots trekked through that corn maze. I could hear heavy footsteps following behind us. They didn't sound like they were too close, though. We rushed until we reached the gate of the corn maze. It was obviously closed since the park was closed as well. We looked back, only to see the man no longer in sight. My boyfriend helped me over the fence and climbed over himself after. We could see our car was the only car in the lot. I turned around, only to see the man now hacking away at the gate with his machete. He was actually starting to break the links. I yelled out in absolute terror. My boyfriend picked me up and started running to the car with me in his arms. He yelled at me to get in the car. We both jumped in and he pulled out in his red Subaru. The last thing I saw was the machete-wielding ghost face bending his body through a hole in the chain-link fence he'd managed to chop away. He stood there, watching us drive away. 
He stood there, watching us drive away into the moonlight, waving his machete angrily in the air, as if to say we were lucky we got away. Next Halloween, I think we'll just stay home with our cats and hand out candy. I'm also never going to watch Scream ever again. For a bit of context, I need to explain how transportation works in the area where I live. So where I live, public transportation is absolute dog shit. There's only one not very reliable public bus that takes you in and out of the residential area. It's a long way walking too, so the people in this area came up with a cab sort of system. You pay by the seat, so one of the cabs fits up to four people. A little under a year ago, they decided to identify these cabs with a sticker and a number that states that the car is part of the cab line. The drivers are also required to have an ID that has the cab line info. Now, on to the story. A couple of times, men have tried to offer me a ride. I try my best to ignore them, but sometimes it can be a little bit scary. The part of the residential area where I live is very isolated, so not a lot of cars or people go through there. I have to walk alone from my house to the cab line and bus stop because of this. At one time a couple of months ago, I was walking from my house to the stop, wearing my headphones so not really paying much attention. That was my first mistake on my part. All of a sudden, a car pulled over right next to me. This wasn't that strange really. I've been using this cab line for a while, and a lot of the drivers know me personally. If they see me, sometimes they'll pull over so I don't have to walk all the way to the stop. The driver said, hey, are you going to my place of destination? I said yes and got into the car without checking the windshield for the ID number. That was the second mistake on my part. Here is where the alarms started going off in my head. First, a lot of the cars in the line tend to be older cars with no AC. This was a newer car, so right when I got in, he locked all the doors. At this point, I finally realized this wasn't one of the cabs I knew, but instead a complete stranger. He began interrogating me over things, exactly where I lived, all sorts of things. I responded as vaguely as possible, with my heart now beating really fast. I was starting to panic, so I texted a friend my location and told him to call me ASAP. At this point, we were getting closer to the destination and the man was not slowing down the car at all. He just drove right past my stop when the call came through from my friend. I started to talk to him like he was my boyfriend. Hi baby, I'm almost there so wait for me and we'll go together, okay? My friend was really confused, but when the man heard my conversation, he suddenly stopped the car right in the middle of the street. Oh, sorry, I was so entertained talking to you that I almost passed by. We'll be seeing each other again. He unlocked the car and I bolted out, barely saying a word to acknowledge him. After that day, I became much more aware of my surroundings, and I tend to only get inside the cabs at the stop unless I clearly see the ID of the car or know the person inside. A couple of my friends said I was just overreacting, but that event really scared the shit out of me. Then, today arrives. I was walking from my house to the stop as usual. No headphones this time though. I was about halfway there when a car started driving slowly next to me. I kept on walking, and the older man that was driving before started to talk to me through the window. Hey, are you Alicia's daughter by chance? You live around here, right? I responded I was not, and kept on walking. He kept on insisting though that he was my neighbor, and he would give me a ride to my destination. I replied again he had mistaken me, and I didn't want a ride from him. Mind you, my mom was not called that, and has been dead for over a decade. My grandma, that sometimes people were confused as my mom, was not called that either. I began walking faster as he followed me, approaching the stop where there were more people. At this point, the man became extremely angry and started to yell at me in front of everyone. He screamed that this was the last time he would be so nice about this to me. 
Then he sped up and left. Finally, I got to the stop to get inside a cab, and they took me to my destination. When I got to work, I told my boss what happened. She said, thank God you kept on walking, you would have been kidnapped. And yeah, that was my morning today. I really need to get myself a car in case that guy comes back around.